Welcome into this Tuesday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Clark Ford at studio here this morning. We'll talk a little bit of basketball. Ole Miss knocking off, knocking off Florida 72-54 yesterday at the Pavilion in Oxford. Um, rough night for uh, Michael White and the Gators. Ole Miss uh, handling things for most of the second half with a uh, blistering shooting performance. So we'll hit, hit that. And uh, another day of uh, transfer portal. We as I'm the sorry. world turns, I mean, we, 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 is it, I guess we can use whatever soap opera trope we like. The, the world turning was it days of our lives? Days it has the lives. hourglass that you just keep the the hour the sands of our lives or time or whatever it is. There was a minute where days of our lives was. I think I was in grad school, and I would. Watch, Hold on, you mean like grad school? Yeah, when I was in graduate school, I would watch days of our lives at, like, at times. Really? Yeah, enough to like keep up with it. Uh, like having did you know characters enough? I can knew about like. Bo and Hope and Marlena and John, all that stuff. Marlena was possessed by the devil. And then there was Stefano, who was kind of like a mob guy. Yeah. I mean, enough to kind of generally keep up with it. And there was Sammy, who was kind of... Kind of got around a little bit. Yeah, when I was a kid, I stayed with my great-grandmother. And I remember she, like, kind of operated her day off the off the soap opera schedule. Because you'd have, like... Young and the Restless at like eleven thirty in the news, and then at one, as the world turns, and yeah. two, Guiding Light. Oh, Guiding and, Light! I remember yeah. that at my grandmother's took house. you all the way through. <clears throat> yeah, people are aware in the stream. We're getting a little yeah, John uh, Black, the Patch. Yeah, see, I'll bring back memories. Okay. I do remember my grandmother's house though. It was as the world turns, followed by the Guiding Light. Yeah. One and two o'clock, and then the game shows came on after that. Oh, really? If I recall correctly. See, we got probably prices right at like 10 a.m. Yeah, heading no, into the... No, these were the afternoon game oh, shows. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, the morning, what are the afternoon game shows? I'm trying to remember. It was like $64,000 pyramid or whatever it was called. And there was... I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Match, the match game. That was an afternoon okay. show, if I recall. Yeah, as Ginger, Ginger says, you probably could start watching today and take you like a day and a half to catch up. Yeah. My favorite thing is getting, if you ever get online and you search like the family trees of the soap opera characters and it's just one big circle. <laughs> like it just runs, like the, it, it's not even, it's like, I, it's like kudzu. It just yeah. kind of comes back around is yeah. all it does at that point. So Everybody's there, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, over time, yes, you need, you need plots, so. Anyway, see this this tells you what what's going on today is what's going on is we we, we let off with soap operas because there is one going on. I'm kind of tired of talking about it, but it is what it is. But nonetheless, now were you are you old enough to have Saturday nights, um, like Hee Haw and the Lawrence Welk show? Not really. I mean, I, I have no real knowledge of that. No so I can remember my so, you know obviously I grew up in Ruston and my my parents both grew up in Monroe and they would take us to my dad's parents' house and drop us off, and then they'd go out in Monroe. And on Saturday nights, we would would have to watch the Lawrence Welk show, I think followed by Hee Haw. Really? And then when Hee Haw ended, we could flip to World Championship Wrestling. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had to survive. Yeah, to get – And then you get the wrestling. You had to get to 7 o'clock, and then I guess at that point my grandfather relented. And we get to watch Ooh. wrestling. I mean, you only had like three channels, so I mean, your yeah, your, no. your, your your options were pretty limited. Because the morning was mid south wrestling, not mid south, because mid south was here. The morning was uh, the Arklamis or whatever they called it. You know, it was based out of like Shreveport. Okay. And then that was that wrestling, and then at night, on Saturday night, you'd get the Atlanta, WTBS. So I guess that was WCW at the time. I don't. I can't remember, but that was like the first time I got introduced to Harley Race and Ric Flair and all those cats. But you were allowed to watch any of the soap operas even as a young kid. Like there was no restrictions on your on your viewing. No, but I mean, not to sound like a complete old. I, I don't think we watched that much TV back then. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we spent our summers out out, out and about. I remember as a kid at night, I wasn't like the only thing that I like, because frankly, like in the 80s, like even when I grew up, like you kind of watch whatever movies. Like you look back now and you go, yeah, most people wouldn't let their kids see that at six, but just have it on repeat. Because like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I have no context to so many of the scenes, but you look back and you go, hold on, was that really what 
you got to be doing day after day after day. And I remember, like, I, I wasn't allowed to watch Knott's Landing at night. That was, like, the one. It was, like, bedtime before <laughs> Knott's Landing. Yeah. That was, like, the that was the thing. Things so. might things might get a little. L- l- yeah, it was a, it was a, that was a bridge too far, apparently. <laughs> Everything else was fine. I mean, watch watch Berlin and Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis and Top Gun all day long. Yeah. But Knott's Landing, Knott's was, Landing. was too far. So. Somebody, somebody might climb in the bed in yeah. Knott's Landing. Yeah. So. All right, all that to say, this here podcast covers a number of topics. It's brought to you by the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. Still trying to give you 10 bucks. Do that by taking a picture of the QR code there at any gas pump, any Blue Sky location in Mississippi. Automatic 10 bucks. It opens the Exxon Mobile out. A couple buttons, 1,000 points, $10 there at the Oxford Exxon. Here locally, you get a lunch special for five sixty nine, two sides of bread, 32-ounce drink, and more. So take advantage of that. Clean convenience store. It's good gas prices you will find and more. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900. 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for our buddy Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. And uh, he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes and business hours right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote. The rest is completely up to you. You can shop that quote around. Do what I've done. What I recommend that you do. Let's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662 257 1900 guest join us on the rafters music and food hotline rafters music and food on the square in oxford uh great place to go have a burger po' boy appetizers grab a beer full bar the whole deal there at rafters music and food on the square in oxford and in new albany i know we're going to get into the show but we've talked about this before but avery's right the john hughes movies from the 80s yeah that we didn't think anything of they don't hold up do they like Campbell watched. We made Campbell watch that at one point, or told her, "Oh, go!" Watch. She was bored. And we're like, "Watch these movies," and she was like, "That is rapey." And then I started watching it again, and I was like, "You know what? It is kind of rapey." Like, there's a lot of like sexual assault themes in some of those. Movies. Oh, like sixteen candles and pretty yeah, in pink and yeah, stuff. Yeah. See, I, I mean, haven't seen them in forever. I, I, I mean, the girl's drunk in the in the car, and the boyfriend's like, the, "Oh, he like gives her to the yeah, other dude." He's like, That's right. Her, yeah, she. Hey, and he looks at her. Hey, see him? That's me. Oh, that's remember right. that? Yeah, it's like, oh, she's totally gone, like drugs and stuff. And that's date rape. I mean, it's just, and that past is like, yeah, whatever. Back then, I mean, it did. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not offended. You know, you've known me yeah. for a long time, Chase. I don't get very offended very easily. But it's like, yeah, you know, now that you say that, I. I see it. I haven't, I haven't gone back and rewatched one in so long. Like I've caught, you might catch a few minutes of like the breakfast club or something on for a second, but that's, that, that that's, I, I can't tell you the last time I sat down and said, I'm going to watch 16 candles today or say no most fire. Or oh something. yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Nah, no, 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 not so much. Yeah. Like my only role with that's like somebody mentioned in the stream is like Nick at night. Like I remember as a kid, like, because that's how we watched the Wonder Years and Happy Days and things was Nick at Night. Oh, yeah. Because they'd already come into syndication and you'd catch them on Nickelodeon at 7, 8, 9 o'clock, stuff like that. So that's how we caught a lot of those shows at that point. Um, before I got that bootleg copy of The Wonder Years from like China one Christmas. It was, it was, a, big, <laughs> it was a big day for me. Because it took it forever to get the music rights because there was so many good songs in the normal, in the old Wonder Years that they couldn't release it on DVD or anything because they couldn't afford the music that, that, that went with it. So... It was like taped off ABC and then bootlegged into these little box set things. It came from like Vietnam or something. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, okay. We The people who made those were paid extremely well. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. About half the price of what Nike pays people. Yeah, um, exactly. So. Just do it. I mean, there's not really any update. I mean, we can we can him and haw around it. Um, Lane Kiffin headed out to California yesterday. I don't know if part of it was picking up um, Dane Stevens, the new analyst that, um, that's working. I don't know if that was a portion of it. Um, supposed to be visiting um, Jackson Dart. I forgot his name for a second. And how the hell wow. did I do that? Yeah, like I completely zoned out on his name for a second. Um, Jackson Dart. I know Ole Miss was planning to see Michael Trigg as well. I, I don't know exactly, other than Lane and Dart, I don't know who saw who. I know Baker was on the road yesterday. Partridge was on the road yesterday. Joiner was on the road yesterday, um, and they were Trig and Dart were among the people, but I don't know what else was going on. Some of them were going to start the twenty twenty three process. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
hopefully for their sake. There is another class here. Hopefully for their sake, that was the majority of it. Frankly, I know that Derek Nix was at Hazelhurst, among other places. Okay. Presumably to start the process or resume the process on younger guys. I think people might have been happy if we just kept talking about 80s uh, <laughs> pop culture instead of anything else that was going on right now. Um, look, they have decisions to make. I mean, there's some rumors about whether there is any type of um, eligibility or academic situation. Um, with Trigger. With Trigger. Okay. Um, I have no idea about that being true. Frankly, the rumor that I've heard, I do not believe to be accurate. So I'm, I'm – I'm not even playing a game or not telling you guys. I'm tell I'm I'm not saying it because I don't find it to be true given what I know about the process. So um and you would have some insight yeah. on that. So I don't it, it's one of those deals where I just I think they have decisions to make. I don't know exactly what all is playing into this. The analyst yesterday that was hired per multiple sources and just my own logic as I think through it. I don't think that had any idea or any anything to do with a piece of the puzzle that had to go into place for Jackson Dart to make a decision. Now, look, it was probably a positive because it's somebody he'd be familiar with. Um, he had previously worked with Gnon Slovis, Jackson Dart, and JT Daniels um, at USC over the last few years. He'd been at USC since he was a player there um, in like 2013, something like that, student assistant and then quality control analyst. Um so, so you don't think there's a quid pro quo there? I do not think there's a quid pro quo. I think it is a plus in Ole Miss's column if there any, is anything left to be a plus and if you needed anything to not make the decision. However, what I believe is that John David Baker knew the guy, knew the guy really well, and in some ways it was it was kind of his – that's strictly my guess, but I believe it to be kind of his hire and he knew him and that made sense to replace uh, Matt that went with Levy. Um, so have you heard the rumor, and it's being mentioned in the thread. Okay. Since we're doing rumors, and at this point, I just whatever. Um, have you heard the rumor about Ole Miss hiring um, the high school Dart's coach. high school coach? Heard the rumor, have nothing on it at yeah, all. I don't either. I've attempted to reach out to him, but uh, Eric Jar, spelled with a K. Yes, he has not responded to said text. Has he not? He has not. Do you have read receipts on? Uh no, it's been nine days since oh, I texted okay. him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm assuming he's seen it. It says it's been delivered. Oh, well, that's a win. Okay. It was a well-written text. I just read it again. Was it? Yeah, it really was. Very proper. Yeah, yeah. Good good punctuation. I try to use the, the, the King's English. Okay. Yeah. So beyond that, uh, they did that. They uh, hired Sam Carter to replace Terrell Buckley yesterday. He'll coach corners at Ole Miss. He came from Arkansas. Young guy. He was uh, he was a Barry Odom, Missouri, from 2016 to 2019 as a uh, as an analyst, the GA, some different titles there, and then uh, cornerbacks coach at Arkansas the uh, the last two years. We've got some uh, stuff on him on the board in the in the recruiting nuggets. That are up this morning, um, but he will replace Buckley, and I guess at this point still leaves what one one coaching spot remaining. Yeah. On what side of the ball is that offense now? Well, I mean, we don't know. It was a special teams coach. Oh, that's right. So, so they, I don't know they, what they're doing. So they could conceivably hire, but if you were to hire the special, if you were to hire the high school coach, does he have to be on the field? He does, barring waivers. And I don't, you know, the NCAA is kind of soft right now on allowing a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm laughing at Avery's question. Did you ask him if he would be a part of? And she, <laughs> yeah, she intentionally spelled it wrong. That's good. I've gotten where now, every time someone on Twitter uses a part or a part correctly, I want to applaud them. Like, I want to quote tweet it and go, you well, think, you think, well done. You think society is that inundated with the incorrect version that you need to applaud the correct version? It is it is used incorrectly at least 80% of the time, and that's you think we have an epidemic of a part and part? Right? Yes, we have an apart epidemic absolutely going on in our country right now. That needs to be because I always thought the lose and lose one was kind of overrated. Down. I didn't see that very much, but you see the apart part. Apart's bad. So I'm so glad to be a part of the program, and they say it apart with no space. And so you you're you're so glad to be away from the program that you just committed to. I don't. And then they get people get mad at you though, man, when you correct at all. Ooh, they lose their stuff. Like, well, you know what I meant. Yeah, 
Well, uh, yeah, but it's not correct. A part is not the same as a part. It's not. And lose lose drives me nuts, man. I but mean, you don't see that that often. It's not often, but. Hey, how's your team doing? We're losing. Trust me. I just, it means they're not tight. They're ready to play. I guess they're, so. They're, 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 they're loose, but, they're, yeah, they're, but they have fewer points than the other team at that moment, so it's not working. Okay. Yeah, the, only way to, the only way to fix a part and a part is to lock down. That's it. you got to lock that down. Anything else on coaches or recruits before I uh, – No, I mean – the Carter thing is interesting because there's two, and this is probably applies to most people. Like it's probably applies to both you and me, more me than you probably. But it's two completely different schools of thought on him. One is that he's a pretty good coach. And two is that he certainly was one of the reasons they had some exodus issues out of the secondary. And I don't know what's true. I mean, yeah. who knows? They've had a big issue with retaining defensive backs. They lost two starters to LSU, um, Fusha and Brooks. Two New Orleans kids. Um, yeah, two New Orleans kids. Mm -hmm. um, had a couple other guys transfer out. They, they, they Their defensive back room, completely different from coach all the way down to who's in it uh, right now. So, Yeah, because they got uh, Breeny, the kid out of Georgia. He transferred into Arkansas the other day I saw. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Look, there's so much transfer portal and coaching stuff, and then you have to understand the way this coaching thing works. So much of assistant coaching stuff is agent-driven. Why we never write that? We, we use it as like some sort of an insider secret or something. The truth is Lane Kiffin doesn't know all these people. And it's not picking on Kiffin, just coaches in general – Agents drive so much of this. Hey, you have an opening. I've got this guy that's on this staff. And they move them to another place because maybe it didn't work out or maybe they need to create an opening. And it's not just Jimmy Sexton. Jimmy Sexton is not like sitting alone in an office, right? He's just the marionette. Yeah, he, there's a but, but he's, he has people that work for him who are aspiring agents. And they all have these – they work these things and – Contracts get done. So much of the stuff behind the scenes. That's why people are asking. And this is, this is. I, I don't want. I'm going to be very clear here. This is not sour grapes at all. This is kudo because you said this yesterday, and I agree completely. Who's the guy at on three? That's Zenit. 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 If you put a gun to my head and said, "Who is his source?" Without a moment's hesitation, I would say CAA. Mm -hmm. Period. And good for him. That's that's good journalism. Yes, yeah, not a criticism. No, I mean, he covers the transfer portal for on three. Mm -hmm. I would guess that he is in front of his computer 10 hours a day, and his phone never leaves his hand. And he's got a contact, or several, yeah, sure. at a place like CAA, and he knows every time something happens. And again, congrats, because he's winning. That's kind of the goal. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. goal, yeah. I mean, that no, no... No shade at all. But that's how that works. The agents drive this so much more than people understand. Yeah. yeah. Thought on that. We'll come back to that in one second. First two about Northeast Spark. Any SPARC service people across rural communities. Two packages. The Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze, the one gig that powers the Clark Ford Studio. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's nespark.com. 662-238-3159. Phone service available. Portal controls a wireless mesh extender if needed, and much more. So get the best internet here in Lafayette County. Again, any spark, 662-238-3159. The Oxford Park Commission has started registration for both youth baseball and softball for the 2022 spring season. Leagues are open for ages 5 to 17 in baseball, uh, ages 5 to 12 in softball. That would actually be fun. It's like a 15, 16-year-old to go play rec league baseball. Oh. Just for kicks and giggles. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be serious. You could just have a good time. You would enjoy that. Yeah, well, because yeah. by 15, if you're not serious about Because you're already kind of locked in at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if you're locked into baseball, you're playing travel yeah, and yeah. stuff. But if you're just goofing around for the summer, that might actually be fun. Anyway. Yeah. I think they have it available for 52. Probably not. Um, We could play, like, adult uh, softball or flag football, if you'd like. We could do that. 
I wouldn't mind playing softball. You play adult softball? Yeah, but I want to play on the team that doesn't care. You don't want to play on the team. You want to play on the real, the beer league team. We're just, yeah, we're, I, want, we're, I want to be a part from the t- people that are trying to win the league. You'll just take that L when they play, you play them yeah. and move on with your day. Yeah, we yeah, could just yeah. be the L's, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Instead of the A's, we could just be the L's. Anyway, uh, cost per participant's 50 bucks. Season begins on Monday, April the 25th. Games played at uh, M-Trade Park. Go to OxfordParkCommission.com uh, before February the 20th to sign up. The Oxford Exxon Podcast also brought to you by Brothrow. It's a social sports betting network, free to use. Really cool, fun way to bet. I saw some people were betting on the Ole Miss Florida game last night on Bro Throw. It's no third party, no juice. Over time, that saves you money. You can start your own group, make friends, and invite your friends. Payment happens within 24 hours of the conclusion of your bet. You can take the other side of an existing bet, start a new bet, and more at uh, brothrow.com. The more I think about it, the more the team name L's is perfect. That is pretty good, isn't it? I like it. Instead of the athletics, the losers. The losers, yeah. Yes. They were short, which would be the L's. Uh, we're brought to you by Dead Soxy. Go to deadsoxy.com, enter the promo code Rebel Grove, get 25% off any order. Best socks you'll ever put on your feet. Also brought to you by the Game Changer Patches. If I ever play for the L's, I will need a Game Changer before and after the game. The only two-patch system available in the market to stop hangovers before they start. The warm-up patch used before or while you drink. The overtime patch used after you've been drinking to recover while you sleep. The all-natural ingredients will keep you in the game, ready for the next play. Go to GameChangerPatch.com, promo code REBELGROVE20 at checkout for 20% off your purchase. Podcast also brought to you by GNM Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. GNM right there on South Lamar in Oxford. Also with uh, Tyson Drugs on the Square in Holly Springs. They deliver locally in the Oxford area and the Upper Med Sink. Free prescriptions the same day each month and take care of you. One trip to the pharmacy, one delivery, and you have everything you need for the month when you need it. They're with G&M, so let your community pharmacy help you out. Pharmacy help you out again, 662-236-2222. Well, what's funny about that is we, we, we don't extrapolate very well because I do think there's this thought that head coaches just know every assistant in the world and they go pick and choose and they find things. A, that would be a problem because you never want to hire nobody but who you know. That would be an issue if yeah. you simply left your thing. And two, you, I mean, one of the biggest criticisms for an AD would be hiring a head coach that he just knows right, right down the hall. So why do we not extrapolate that down to a head coach hiring 10 people instead of one? Like, if an AD is scouring the country for their head coach, it makes sense to me that the head coach would then use resources available to find their assistant coaches. Not just, oh, well, I've been around the business and I know 100 people when they say, like, it doesn't really logically make sense when you run it all the way out. So. No. But I don't know why we don't ever talk about that, though. It's like a. No, it's always thought of. White guy knows everybody. It's like a secret. And now that would help because you have contacts and networking and sure. those type of things. But. Yeah, but, but. If Nick Saban has an opening on his staff, the call that he makes, I'm telling you, is Sexton. Hey, give me, give me 10 names. So why do we assume that's that's what Kiffin does too? Coach leaves. Hey, I need to replace him. Give me give me ten names. Give me five names. Give me eight names. Give me whatever number you want to use. Yeah. Then you call a couple. Hey, you know this cat. You know this cat. Yeah. Then you vet okay. a little bit. Then you talk to him and go from there. Sure. And then you make a hire and you move on. Yeah. Hey, there's some there's shirts over there. Put the logo on. And so this was hey maybe his time at Arkansas was coming to a close and needed a fresh start. Uh, Sexton represents both coaches. Get away from Barry Odom a little bit. Yeah, C- CAA represents all, all these guys. You just move them around. That's, That's where it is. Tree. I mean, they, they represent Odom too. I yeah. mean, they represent everybody. And that's where we always put kind of a negative. Con- or we don't. Fans put a negative connotation on it sometimes. I mean, agents' jobs are to put puzzles together. Oh, maybe. Oh, oh. now. That- now it all makes sense. Now it's starting to make sense. Maybe the puzzle. He was waiting on Jimmy to put the puzzle together. Maybe the puzzle pieces were not the players, they but were the, the coaches. Because coaches. he went out and got an analyst. He did. And a cornerbacks coach. He did. Two puzzle Two pieces. Two puzzle pieces. Just talk through it. So we had that, and then the dog could be Jack Abraham, as mentioned. It's possible. I wrote that in 10 Thoughts, that he that did. was possible. 
Yeah. Grind asking about Abraham as a preferred walk on to Ole Miss. Yeah, I don't know what his designation would be. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, Ole Miss has some initials to use. They're not using them next Wednesday, mm-hmm. so I mean, you could. That is one thing here, guys. I don't think this is ending for a while. I expect Ole Miss to pick up. Give me a number. Because I got a number in mind. I don't want to oversell it. What's the first number that comes to your mind? I was trying to decide whether to say four to seven or five to eight. I was going to say six. Okay. Okay. Give or take. Yeah, we get to. Hey, the good news is we get to do this again in late April. Now, I will say this. Uh,. (laughs) After February 1st, a player from the SEC cannot get in the portal and then transfer to another SEC school. Right. So any any post-spring practice transfers either will have to have been in the portal the whole time or not be SEC members if they come to Ole Miss. But they could come from the Big 12 or the Big 10 or the American or the MAC. Well, that is very true. There's so many places that we will be able to track. It's going to be so exciting. Yes, potentially seven. I'm going to go six. Six? Six. That's my number. I always – I trend toward it always being a couple less than I kind of think or fewer than I think. Like I Could be. Because a lot of dudes, frankly, that they think is getting in the portal and a lot of them decide not to. Yeah, because the So coach, what you kind of have in your head ends up not happening. The coaches at the current school have all spring to recruit them if they want them. I mean, it's like for Frankly, Alabama. I'm a little skeptical of guys that jump in the portal in late April. That means that they were there all spring, and the coaches were like, "Yeah, cool, bye." <laughs> yeah, we don't care that you're 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 leaving. Actually, yeah. it's, you're leaving. Okay, we'll help you out. Yeah, holler at us. Let us know where you want to go. We'll, yeah, we'll, peace. We'll, we'll get on that. Hey, I know somebody at Bowling Green. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. Take Alabama, for example. We heard about a wide receiver the entire time we thought was getting into the portal. Um, he ended up not, but then his teammate did, and you went, hold on a minute. Javon Baker being the yeah. one that did. And you go, well, that might mean they wanted that cat, and they didn't really care as much about that cat mm-hmm. getting in the portal. Because it went from this other dude, hey, I'm in, I'm in, you know, he's going to go, he's going, he's going, going to, yeah, no, I don't think he's going to stay. And he went, oh, really? How about that? Yeah. Just woke up one morning and had a change of heart, huh? Yeah. That's how it works. Bama said you're going to play. You had an epiphany. Oh, well, we had something. We'll call it that. Baker ended up at Kentucky, right? He did, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky. Football wide receiver haven all of a sudden. <laughs> yep. Kind of like Baylor just getting basketball players. You go, you know what? When I think hoops, I think Waco. Absolutely. How many young guys dreamed of playing basketball right there on the – what's the name of the river? I don't know. <laughs> It's not with the Rio Grande. Is no, it? it's like a, it's like a, it's a different river that runs through Waco. Oh, it's uh, the bra, bra, uh, blah, 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 blah. the Braxos yeah, or something like Bravos, that. Bravos, maybe. Bra, bra, okay, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hoops and Waco. I'll tell you this: if you're with us right now, you you either like us or you you are bored. It's just habit at this point, right? I, I guess. I I, I I we had some insight though. We did, no, I mean, we did at least discuss the agent thing because the agent thing is what pushes it. It's like, where's his source coming from? He's got an agent. And if you cover yeah, the yeah, portal yeah, yeah. like that, you need agents. People, you, people are like, how come you guys don't have that? Well, I mean, I'll be honest. I'm not, I'm not like connected at CAA right now on a day-to-day basis because why? We know of the two in the South. How many like super agents are there in college football? Oh, Sexton not, and Campbell. Yeah. But that's the only two we really run across much. Those are the only two that I hear about routinely. There's there's some others. But like, I don't know if Patrick Strong, his group had – well, he works for he works for Russ, yeah, I so I don't say, know. He's with, yeah. he's with Russ Campbell. Yeah, so it might be just those two for the most part. And that's a strong firm now. I mean, pardon the pun. Yeah. I do like Chip and Joanna's show. I watched it the other day. On, do you really? I do. He's kind of funny to me. She's not bad to look at, so it's it's kind of a good show. You watch a lot of those kind of channels. They took over this one house that was just 
freaking filthy, man. And they turned it into it was, it was pretty nice at the end. I was impressed. Still out in the middle of nowhere. Like I've never been to Waco, but it just feels like there's nothing there. Oh, that's loud. Sorry. Good. Yeah. Okay. Do you think Tom Brady has any actual desire to hang it up, or are we just doing this Willy Wonny thing for a couple of weeks for the hell of it? I don't know. Um, oh, that's not a call I should have taken. Um, he's talking on a podcast yesterday. He's 45. Yeah. I mean, what's left? Well, there's nothing left. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to keep doing it. That's it. I mean, he says yesterday he's on he's on his Let's Go podcast with Jim Gray yesterday. And he says, I think as I've gotten older, I think the best part is football is extremely important in my life. It means a lot to me. And I care a lot about what we're trying to accomplish as a team, and I care a lot about my teammates. The biggest difference is now that I'm older, I have kids too, you know, and I care about them a lot as well. They've been my biggest supporters. My wife is my biggest supporter. It pains her to see me get hit out there, and she deserves what she needs from me as a husband, and my kids deserve what they need from me as a dad. I'm going to spend some time with them, give them what they need, because they've really been giving me what I need the last six months to do what I love to do. I said this a few years ago. It's what my relationships are all about. It's not always what I want. It's about what we want as a family, and I'm going to spend a lot of time with them and figure out what the future is next. It's three children, um, 14, 12, and 9. Uh, there's nothing left for him from a – Legacy standpoint, nothing. nothing. It's just a matter of whether he wants to keep doing it or not. I mean, he's first ballot Hall of Fame, and he would be retiring after throwing for like five thousand yards. I mean, he had a hell of a season. Yeah, I mean, no, he, what's all that's left for him is to get hurt. Honestly, how long do you want to do that? I mean, yeah, he looks like a gazillion dollars, but how long do you want to have to work as hard as he's having to work in his forties to? Ha- be there because he is one regimented son of a bitch. Yeah, how long do you want to do that? I, I mean, you know, and she's making videos of her in a bikini and stuff. Kind of, I thought it was kind of her subtle way of saying, "Hey, I'm here." Be hard to look at her in a bikini and go, "No, I'm going to go work out," or really need to work out. Maybe one or the other. But to work out the way you have to work yeah, out yeah, at yeah. his age to be a successful NFL quarterback. I mean, the amount of time he's having to put in is unreal, I'm sure. Somebody, uh, Matt, asking in the thread about uh, Sean Payton. Yeah, going around a good bit yesterday. Gail Benson, the owner of the Saints, uh, her quote was, I don't think any of us know, but he'll let us know soon enough, was what they uh, they said about Payton. Payton is not yet committed to returning, coaching the Saints in uh, 2022. Um Though he was expected to return to work this week along with the rest of the coaching staff after a vacation last week. He's 58 years old and under contract um, through 2024. So, which means a trade would have to be worked out for him to coach another team. So, Television networks have obviously shown interest should he want to. Uh, he could take a year, go do some TV. I guess he'd have to take two years, wouldn't he, and do TV? Benson speaking at a Mardi Gras event. Uh, we don't know, you know, who knows? We'll find out soon enough, I guess. Ooh. A little bit of an interesting quote there. Just a little frustrated. Yeah. I mean, Sean's been there a long time. 2006. Um, you know, I think it's. That some, is a hellaciously long time for an NFL head yeah, coach. Yeah. I think at some point you start thinking about doing something different. In week 18, Peyton acknowledged how trying the season was. This stretch has been, I don't want to say exhausting, but it's been one of those where you just get on to the next task. Nothing surprises you. When you go all the way back to the start of the season, it feels like two and a half years ago we were evacuating to Dallas during the hurricane. I mean, it doesn't feel like that's part of the season. I'm trying to think of a good way to describe it. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, he's tired. Yeah, he's tired. Well, that's a grind of a job. I do think should he retire, the Saints, big on continuity, I think Dennis Allen would get a real look to stay yeah, in-house. I could see that. I, I think that would be the prohibitive favorite. Well, you wouldn't want to go change your system completely. Their system has worked. No, they've got a good culture. I mean, culture well, they make the playoffs this year if Winston doesn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, if they had an average quarterback, they're at yeah. least in the playoffs. Sure. Now, they wouldn't be playing now. But no, they they, they, be... they'd be out by now, but sure. That would have been a miserable day against the Rams. Um, yeah. Not have been ideal. Been a struggle. Team you can't throw. Be a struggle. Um, only Bill Belichick has been with his team longer than uh, Sean Payton has been a uh, been a Saint. I guess Mike Tomlin is just short of the Burns. Yeah, just short of that. Anyway, that's what we are. Uh, we'll get into basketball in a minute, I guess. Um, we'll do that. Tomlin you know, gets to reboot quarterbacks now. Yeah, he gets a whole different. Yeah, he gets to kind of start over. You think they're going to draft one of them? You I think it's Pickett or Corral? I do, although, you know, because it's conceivable that some, there's some quarterback movement. It's also down at 20. You might have to move. Yeah, might have to move up. Might Because might. even if just the Saints and the, Re- and the Washington took you. Do you buy the stuff about Seattle moving Wilson this this offseason? Maybe. Now, there keeps being so much Saints buzz, but I don't see any way in hell the Saints can afford him. Like, at all. I, I just – I. <laughs> I know you can kick the can down the road and do a lot of stuff, but the cap is the cap at some point, and the Saints are, I mean, in absolute cap hell. So I don't know how you would get around that. I just can't make that make sense. But anyway. Uh, we'll talk hoops in a second. We'll tell you about Nick's Tan and Associates, real estate here in the Oxford area, the buy side, the sell side. Let them help you out. And that's nickstanoxford.com, 662-281-1200. I'll keep Graham Clay DeWeese and our team of Associates will help you out knowing every inch of Lafayette County. Or whenever you're ready to make your next move, you can click their link there in my message board signature on rebelgrove.com or give them a call again, 662-281-1200, nixtanoxford.com. Uh, we're also brought to you by ACS, Automation Control Systems, LLC. It's a complete electrical control system solution provider and a Rockwell Automation Recognized System Integrator. Uh, ACS has a uh, full-time dedicated emergency service and troubleshooting staff and a UL508A panel shop. If you're in need of custom HMI and SCADA solutions or large horsepower VFD specialists, they've got you covered. It's ACSLLCMS.com or 662-601-4381. Brought to you by Lamons Fine Jewelry, 1126 North Lamar Boulevard in Oxford. Um, Valentine's Day right around the corner. Engagement rings, wedding rings, fine jewelry, watches, pearls, fashion jewelry, children's jewelry, collectibles, and more. Lamons is the gold standard in fine jewelry. Visit them at... Uh, lemonsfinejewelry.com or call them at 662-234-2777 the, the cryptic text from people crazy really well some yeah and then okay. and then some are making fun of me um anyway uh brought to you by comer heating and air southern air conditioning and heating different names same great products and services if you live in oxford tupelo or the surrounding area call uh, comer at 662-801 one seven seven seven. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or that area, call six six two four two nine forty four twenty nine. College Corners, your one stop rebel shop. Two locations in the Jackson area in Ridgeland. It's next to Fleet Feet and Flowood. It's next to Half Shell. You can also go to collegecornerstore.com. Plus, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. And brought to you by Pinnacle. Uh, they've got advisors in multiple states. Uh, they represent clients in more than twenty states. They're based out of Madison, Mississippi. They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and so much MyPINNWealth.com. Brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. John's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows him to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits simply not available to other travelers. Just get in touch with him. Give him some parameters, give him a budget, he'll give you options, and no, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services, 901-494-3387 or Edwards at regencytravel.net. I guess also brought to you by Community Mortgage, Community Mortgage located in Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. All underwriting and processing is done in Memphis through your local underwriting and understands your market. A leader in condo financing, the float down option, and more. You can find Jason at 662-234-2704. <clears throat> or J L O W E at community mtg dot com. So as we said uh, in the opening, as you uh, you know by now as well, <clears throat> Ole Miss knocking off Florida last night at the Pavilion seventy to fifty four. The uh, the final there, Ole Miss um, controlled most of the second half and um, dominated the second half. Yeah, 
after shooting what in the second half? 74%? Yeah, so the first half was 22 to 22. It was 20 minutes of basketball that I think most of college basketball would like to forget. In the second half, Ole Miss was really good. Um, 17 of 23 from the floor. It's 73. Point, 17 of 23. Yeah, that's 73.9%. Uh, well, that, that's a that's a that's a W every time if you do that. That's not my... uh, they were two of four from three, 12 of 14 from the stripe. For the game, they, they shot 52.1%, 80% from the uh, free throw line, made four of 13 threes, 31%. Yeah, Florida on the other hand. Ooh. I looked up at one point. Florida was one for 22 from three. They finished four of 29 from the three-point line. Four of 29. Castleton didn't play, hasn't played since January the 18th. But they shot 38% from the floor, 13.8% from three. They did go 12 of 14 from the line. From an officiating standpoint, I thought the game was pretty well called. Both teams, not tons of free throws. It's okay. Uh, both teams had 18 fouls. They did a good job of that. Uh, Ole Miss out rebounded Florida 30 to 28. Looking for uh, points off turnovers. Ole Miss was 23 to 13. Points in the paint. Ole Miss won 32 to 28. Ole Miss 7 to 6 on second chance points. 8 to nothing on fast breaks. Ole Miss's bench, keyed by Luis Rodriguez, outscored Florida's bench 16 to 14. Um,. What else is there that, that that tells the story? That's about it. I mean, Ruffin was damn good for most yeah. of the game last night. Uh, Ole Miss, Ole Miss, Ole Miss only had ten turnovers. Florida had fourteen. Ole Miss had seventeen assists. Uh, Florida had fourteen. There's, Ole Miss controlled the game really. Uh, led, led a little more than twenty-one minutes. Uh, there were nine lead changes. They were tied four times. Florida's biggest lead was early. They led by seven with uh, eight eighteen left in the first, and then from that point forward, so in the final twenty eight minutes, Ole Miss won the game by twenty three points, which is pretty impressive. It was a, a really like Kermit Davis said after the game. I mean, this is no team needed a win more than they did, just from a psyche standpoint. They they played very well in the second half. The two guards, man, are really good, Ruffin and, and Morell, and I thought Matt played a really kind of an efficient game. He was 8 for 12 from the floor, 3 of 6 from 3, uh, 20 points, 1 rebound, 3 assists, 2 turnovers. And then Ruffin, you know, they've they've asked this kid who missed most of the offseason, frankly, go lead, and he has. I mean, 21 points, 6 of 13 from the floor, took one three-pointer, missed it, got to the line 10 times, made 9, 2 rebounds, uh, six assists, two turnovers, four steals. That's a really solid line for a point guard, period. But for a freshman point guard who late in the game was in some foul trouble to play that efficiently, that's impressive. I thought it was interesting last night. You know, obviously kids are not in bubbles. They hear things. Players hear things. Post-game show with DK last night. Um, Ruffin – made a comment about how everything – I don't have it verbatim, but essentially everything that was good about the game was because of coaching and he did not want to play for anybody else. It's kind of offhand with a comment that obviously wasn't geared oh, wow. toward that. Um, I thought that was interesting because, again, I mean, obviously, you know, the old Miss – I mean, radio crew is not bringing that up. Well, they hear stuff. Come on. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, the kids have ears. They have phones. And they talk to people. Mm-hmm. Kind of used the unprompted there to to stump a little bit for Kermit. Not interesting. I talked to some people last night. For a freshman. Not Ole Miss people. Because Ole Miss people aren't going to talk. I think this assumption that Kermit's out is way, way, way premature. Oh, I'm not sure it's even in the in the realm unless there was just a complete and utter fall apart. I don't, and probably even goes beyond a record. It would have to mean a program fall apart. I think so, too. I think if you're betting today, the, the betting money would be on him getting another year. Now, look, if this year ends 5-13 and 13 in the league, you, you do have to have a – a very frank conversation 
where you sit and look at each other and go, this isn't personal. Just we got to do better. Yeah. Got to sell more tickets. The, the, now, last night was a makeup game, so that counts in. But the, the atmosphere was poor. Yeah. I mean, nobody's was would, very empty last night. Nobody would look at that and go, man, this program has momentum. This program is rolling. It was a makeup game. It was a Monday night at 6. It was also an SEC game. Florida doesn't come to town that often. It's a beloved son coming back in to coach the opponent. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole deal. There's a lot there. And if I'm Florida now, can I be honest? And I like Mike a bunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I've known Mike for a long time. But if I'm Florida, I've got to have two conversations when I look at this roster. And again, Castleton didn't play, and he's a very good player. But I gotta look at this roster and their guard play and go, okay, now wait a minute. We have a Jordan contract. We're at Florida, and this is our roster. Why? And if the answer is, well, you know, look around the league. Then we got to decide if I'm Florida. Are we? We're doing this. Are we cool with this level of investment? Yeah, because that was not a stacked uh, talent team at all. I mean, they had some cats. They didn't do much. Like they just didn't do much. They went three guards. None of them were. All that impressive. What's Castleton bring? Oh, he's points in the paint. He's a guy who's very versatile. Yeah. He's an NBA talent. I but mean, he's not he, helping their guard play a damn bit. No, their guard play sucks. But look, it was a it was a good a, a good win for Ole Miss, and they turn around. They'll have a it sh- was an incredibly needed win from a psyche standpoint. I mean, sure. Geez. So they they'll have a short practice today. They'll do some film. They'll do more home games this week. Look at Arkansas, and then you know there's no reason to go kill them today because you got to play it again tomorrow night against a fresh Arkansas team. But now that that ought to help the mood a little bit. So we'll see what tomorrow night brings when Arkansas comes to town. And then they get Kansas State on Saturday afternoon. Which yeah, is frankly, a pretty winnable game if you play well. Kansas State's not great. No, so they've got a chance to right the ship somewhat. But look, at the end of this year, the goal at, at Ole Miss is to be in the NCAA tournament conversation, and right now they're not. And the whole injury conversation is, okay, yeah, you had injuries, no doubt, but we've, you've got to get better. If you're, if you're Keith Carter and you're, you're just sitting in the room and having a coffee, it's got to be, you got to get better at evaluating. Because when you talk to other people, they're like, that's their problem. Their problem is not that they're not in the game because, they look, they have some players, two in particular, who are really good. Um, but you got to you, – you, you can't have dead spots on your roster, as many as they've got. I mean, everybody's got a dead spot or two. But you can't have six. And, you know, I mean – like Sammy Hunter played, I'm not picking on Sammy here, but he played eight minutes last night. Two points on a dunk, no rebounds, no blocks, no steals, no assists. You don't get much out of him. And he's been in that program for a long time. And there, Jamin Brakefield played 26 and a half minutes, two points, did get five rebounds, had an assist. But Jamin's kind of a project. I mean, there's a big name there and all that stuff, but but when you watch his game, put the hype away, there's a lot of development that has to happen for him to be a, a truly impactful SEC player. Mm-hmm. Rebels now 10-9 and nine overall, 2-5 and five in the league. Uh, again, Arkansas on Wednesday. Tonight around at the SEC, Alabama's at Georgia tonight. Obviously one tied has to have and they should get. Auburn at Missouri tonight. Um Auburn number one in the country. They did move up yesterday. And then uh, Mississippi State at Kentucky tonight. That is a 8 o'clock tip at Rupp tonight for, the, for that one. It's a big opportunity for State. The the big kid that got hurt at the end, have you heard an update on him? No. Nope. Nothing. Kentucky 15-4, and four, Bulldogs 13-5. and five. Um, We talked about it for a second yesterday. The Ole Miss women got ranked uh, – Number 24 yesterday. Yeah. Congratulations to them. That's First time since uh, 2007. I was actually like halfway covering them back the last time they got ranked. Um, yeah. I mean, again, kudos. We said this said this repeatedly. She's done a um, 
the numbers, as Andy Kennedy used to always say, you are what the numbers say you are. And her numbers say that she has really turned the program around. I mean, 180 from where they were. Oh, it's, 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 it's remarkable. It's remarkable. Yeah. I, I, I mean, they weren't just bad. I mean, they between the NCAA stuff, the whole deal. I mean, it was an it was a certifiable train wreck, um, to the point that nobody wanted to take the gig. And yeah, I mean, she was. I tell you what's been impressive, frankly, about her from the standpoint of just locking in, is staying to a task when early on you know it's going to suck and you're honest about it. Because she sure. basically came out and said, hey, look, we're not good right now. We're going to get good, but we suck. She took the Theo Epstein approach. Yeah, she said, it's going to take a minute. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it sucks. We suck. We need better players. Mm-hmm. We're going to get it. Just chill. It's going to be a minute. I mean, it was – there'd be a tendency to not do that, and I thought that was pretty impressive that the whole time how she's kind of managed a lot of those things um, as that is uh, – that's going on. I don't know. It's fairly interesting. Uh, I'm just going to look and see. Curious. Ole Miss currently sitting Ole Miss basketball at number 27 in the net. Oh, that's a good spot. Yeah. So, uh, And you look around the league, their next few games, they play Georgia, who's 25. They play South Carolina, who's obviously number one. And then I was looking for Missouri. Missouri's always down at 43. That's a scary game for Ole Miss coming up now because Missouri's beaten South Carolina. Um, they're they're pretty decent. They have one really, really good player. Um, so those are kind of your next ones. I'm going to spend a ton of time on it. But anyway, that's – If you're wondering yeah. for updates on SEC net, what what a, what a win win at this point. Uh, Ole Miss has jumped – Ole Miss's net jumped 15 points last night to 119. Florida fell 10 points to 44. Ooh. Arkansas comes in tomorrow. They're still 55. They were 55 yesterday, so they've remained um, status quo. Yeah, so, you know, who's the other team? Kansas State. I was looking for them. Let's see. I'll tell you in case you were wondering, because I was wondering. I'm not sure what that says about me, but I was wondering. Kansas State is uh, 63 in the net. That's kind of interesting. Um, I was looking at ESPN's mock draft this morning, and I mean, everybody's kind of guessing to some extent. But uh, they have the Texans taking Evan Neal at number three and just pairing him with Tunzel and figuring out positions later and trying to strengthen the offensive line. Why not? Especially if they feel like – It says Neal could be a 15-year starter at tackle or guard, and they just figure it out. And frankly, Laramie has not stayed overly healthy, so it also gives him a potential left tackle option should he miss time. Just interesting there from that. Um, ESPN has looking for Corral. They have N'Kobe Dean a little higher. They have him up to nine, by the way, to the Broncos. Yeah, when I saw people putting him in the 20s, I was like, there's no way. ESPN has Malik Willis, the first quarterback, off the board. I mean, that's... The pe- Washington at number 11. It's people falling in love with his tools. And if you take him, look, you might look like a freaking genius, but there's also a chance you've got a lot of egg on your face, and that's the end of your career. <clears throat> if you told me Willis ends up being a really good quarterback after a little bit of time, I buy it. If you're telling me that Malik's got to play for you next season, it's a disaster. Mm-hmm. And in today's NFL, the rookie quarterbacks play. They have Pickett at 18 to the Saints and Corral at 20 to the Steelers. I mean, that's that's that is landing. That is that is losing some money up front and maybe making it down the road from that because of where you end up in that. Yeah. You keeping up with the MLB Hall of Fame at all today? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I'll I'll react when I see who's in or who's out, but no, I'm, that that's never something where I'm like, oh, let me wait and see who gets the calls and different things like that. I don't I don't care enough for that. 
David, what, are, what are we debating today? So the the big one is is David Ortiz. Okay. Did you ever watch David Ortiz and think Hall of Famer? I thought Hall, Hall of very very good. good. Yes. Really good player. But Hall of Fame? Did you ever think David no. Ortiz is a Hall of Famer? If you get him into the Hall of Fame, you can only do it using intangibles, that he was such a heart of that Red Sox team that broke the streak and all that. You, you'd have to lean on that stuff more than straight-up play. Here's what bothers me about David Ortiz. Okay. Okay? Okay. This is my baseball hot take of the day. Okay. Barry Bonds, who beyond a shadow of a doubt is a Hall of Fame talent, is probably still not going to get in because of steroids. Yeah, sure. Let's everyone be honest for a minute here, okay? Okay. The baseball gods, the all-knowing baseball gods come down and say, all right, Chase, we know the truth. Did David Ortiz ever in his entire major league career experiment with steroids with enhancement, performance-enhancing drugs? We know the answer. You're on the clock. How confident are you in saying, oh, no, no baseball gods. David Ortiz is clean as the driven snow. Well, it's impossible to say that. So would you So you would not be comfortable saying that. So then why is he getting – his name was whispered. So he gets in. Rodriguez doesn't. Bonds doesn't. Clemens doesn't. Guys who were absolutely dominant in their pre-steroid careers. And don't get me wrong, I've been to the Hall of Fame. It's kind of overrated in my mind. It was fine. It's like, oh, look, another baseball, and another baseball, and another baseball. There's only so much you can do. It didn't, like, I'll never lose a moment of sleep over who does or does not get into the Hall of Fame. Okay, so does this make you more or less likely, on your opinion? Okay. His career war is 55.3. Okay. Yeah. Guys within a few spots of him on it. Okay. Uh he has this, he has the an equal war to Joe Maurer. He's right behind Jeff Kent. Mm-hmm. Um Hank Greenberg, if you want to go back. Uh Jose Cruz, Ian Kinsler, Ron oh, Say. Jose Cruz was a good player. Well, and we're not arguing he's not a good player. And this is but this is the point. Ron Say was a good player. He is one war behind Johnny Damon. For his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, Evan Longoria is just ahead of him. Just dudes. I mean, Willie Stargell's just ahead of him. <laughs> Chet doesn't believe in the sports gods. John Olerud just ahead of him. Yeah. It's kind of, and that's, see, so if, when you ask me, David Ortiz, but now here's like, that's where I kind of put him in that group with those kinds of players. But like, Career war is kind of a weird stat, too, because the longer you play, the whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's not the perfect stat because. Give me his best 10 years. I mean, hold on. I mean, you don't, we, 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 didn't, we weren't prepared for this. But, <laughs> yeah. That's but about, my, my point was not you, Chase, <laughs> give me his best 10 years. My point was, in general, when I'm looking at it, like there was a 10-year period where Ryan Sandberg was the best second baseman in baseball. There was a 10-year period where. But there was a ten-year period where Roger Clemens was the best pitcher in baseball, and 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 it, the best power pitcher in baseball, and that was before the steroids. And yet, because he used steroids, we're like, nope, nope, you're done ever. And it always feels like an overreach. And so then you look at some of these guys like Ortiz, and you're like, okay, well, you were just an average player in Minnesota, and then you become a superstar. And I'm suspicious. He had a hell of a – I'll give him a four-year, five-year run that was really good. So, 03 to 07. Okay. His OPSs were 961, 983, 1,001, 1,049, 1,066. Give him a really good five-year run there. Um, Finished fourth, second, third, and fourth. Four years in a row in the in the MVP race. Okay. Um, All star a few more times, but that doesn't count for I anything. Mean, Dale Murphy had a five year run. Oh, that's that's a good compare. Like 
for their eras. That's a that's yeah. a good comparison. When I was a kid, there was a period that Dale Murphy won a couple of MVPs. When I was a kid, there was a moment, there was a minute there where Dale Murphy was the best player in the game, best offensive player in the game. He led the league at any point in his career in these numbers. In 2006, he led the league in total bases. In 2007, he led the league in on base percentage. Uh, led the league in walks in 07. Led the league in walks in 06. Led the league in RBIs in 05 and 06. And led the league in home runs in 06. Those are the times he led the league in any stat. A damn good career. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, well, damn the, good. The argument's not were you an awesome player, but were you a Hall of Fame player? I don't care. But he gets in, and we don't put Barry Bonds in. I mean, do you remember Pittsburgh Pirates Barry Bonds? You should because he damn near beat the Braves. Oh, no, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Sid Bream, the slide, the I mean, whole deal. Pittsburgh Pirates Barry Bonds was amazing. He was Ken Griffey. Luke's making the argument, and I don't hate the argument, that essentially he was the best DH for a decade. Okay. Okay. But I see it a little different when you go, well, you you have to, you can't really take war in because he didn't play defense. Well, part of my argument is he didn't play defense. I mean, that that counts too. Yeah, of course. No, I'm not saying you've got to be Omar Vizquel to get in the Hall of Fame. But, but how long did, is Edgar Martinez in the Hall of Fame? How long did it take him to get in? Took him a while. He's in though, right? I think so. Yeah, pretty sure. Feel pretty sure about that. Ortiz, William Ray makes a point. I mean, Martinez got in in nineteen. Ortiz is is was very popular with media. It was very good to media. Bonds wasn't. Um, oh sure, he was popular with people in a way that Bonds wasn't. He was good to fans in a way that Bonds wasn't. Clemens was a prick to media. Yeah. I mean, they're fighting back a little bit. I don't think you should at all. I mean, I would – here's my thing. I can't put David Ortiz on my ballot if I'm not circling Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds. Yeah, sure. And I think if I were a voter, I would vote Bonds in. I know I would. Yeah, I feel pretty confident. I know I would. Because you, then you got to get into this how many guys took steroids. And look, I know a couple of major leaguers from that era – and I've had private conversations with them. Yeah. I know one in particular who pitched against a lot of those guys, and he'll flat tell you. Yeah. Who did and who didn't. We've had that conversation. Yeah. And I'm like, how sure are you? I'd bet my life, my children's lives, yeah, whatever. I've saw it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then those guys will turn around and go, and then there's guys that played in that era, in the nineties in particular that didn't cheat, and had they cheated, would have made a lot more money and that probably would have had completely different numbers. David DeLucci. Mark Grace. Yeah. I mean, if David DeLucci juices, the ball that hits off the wall Out of here. is in the sixth row. Yeah. His contract's different. Mm -hmm. Mark Grace hit more doubles in the 90s than any player in baseball. Yeah. How many of those doubles get out? I, know. I mean, more than one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, podcast brought to you in part by Johnston Hill Creamery, 662-419-9201, or email cheese at johnstonhillcreamery.com. It is king cake season. Take advantage of uh, of that. Many different sizes, different flavors. You can see what all they have available. They are uh, selling quickly. They're going to pre-order all the way through uh, March 1st. just takes 24 hours to get them. You can find them on their Instagram page, Johnston Hill Creamery. Or go to johnsonhillcreamery.com, again, to see full menu of items, plenty of add-on items, the uh, the spice honey, the pepper jelly, a couple of my favorites there with Johnson Hill. And remember, they make their own cheeses in-house every single day. That is all local. They uh, have them ready for you. So stop in right there off Molly Bar in Oxford and see what they have available for you. Again, 662-419-9201. Also brought to you by Opa, Oxford's newest restaurant on the historic square. Euros, wraps, kebabs, fresh redfish, lamb chops, and more. Handcrafted cocktails, frozen libations, candlelit patio, all of that at 306 South Lamar, just south of the Square Courthouse in Oxford. Grenada Nissan's the place to go. If you're looking for a, a Nissan vehicle, check out uh, 
Grenada Nissan just off Interstate 55 in Grenada, Mississippi. Complete selection of new, previously owned, and uh, leased deals there at Grenada Nissan. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. I'll have a mailbag up tomorrow. It's brought to you by Whitney McNutt, Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors, serving you for all your real estate needs in Oxford and Tupelo. She sells condos, land, commercial, and residential family homes. 662-567-2573 or 662-842-3844. What are your goals for 2022? Does your company need hard to find talent to meet these goals? Maybe you're personally seeking a career change. Let this be your year to make the change, and your first step needs to be to contact Service Specialist Employment Agency. It's the oldest employment agency in Mississippi. They recruit in all industries. Remember, there's nothing to lose by reaching out. No cost to you as a candidate. Everything is kept confidential. Service Specialist wishes you and your company a successful 2022, and you can contact them at 662-832-5138. Brought to you by The Rogue. All your the best items are... Uh, for men's clothing are there at The Rogue. It's therogue.com, 4450 I-55 North in Jackson. Don't just accept what you see, but imagine something new. Step forward and chase after a better version of yourself. Every day, Corinth Dental is helping people reinvent themselves. One smile at a time, Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative state-of-the-art procedures, including Invisalign. These clear aligners are the virtually invisible way to improve your smile. Call Corinth Dental today for a no-cost digital scan of your teeth. Let them show you the way to a straighter, healthier smile. 12 months, no down payment financing available at CorinthDental.com. And we're pleased to welcome Bell and Grove to the podcast based out of Chattanooga. Daryl Oliver and Evan Dial built Bell & Grove. It's a logistics provider with more than 35 years of transportation industry experience. They specialize in domestic freight movement throughout the continental U.S. Bell & Grove can navigate through supply chain issues while also leaning on their partner carriers to get the most competitive rate possible for their customers. In addition, Bell & Grove can help customers design a custom solution for their shipping needs. Whether your business is in need of moving a truckload, a partial shipment, or a flatbed, Bell & Grove can accommodate you. Bell & Grove also provides both air and ground expedited services for customers who need to move product quickly. For more information, get in touch with Daryl Oliver at 865-672-6557. Podcast also brought to you by uh, PrimeShrimp.com. It's P-R-I-M-E. Easy cook shrimp, no mess, no prep. Just drop the frozen pouch in boiling water. It ships straight to your door in just a few days. It's cooked in less than 10 minutes if you're on the fly. You don't have to be an expert chef, anything like that. they got multiple flavors available. The signature seasoning and the French Quarter Alfredo. More coming soon as well. And remember, if it's your first order with uh, them, use the code MPW. You get $20 off for that. And with uh, at least four pounds, they ship for free. So take advantage of that. Again, primeshrimp.com. They had a, uh, a, a huge... Um, influx of orders for you guys really appreciate that i know they were running out of dry ice and different things but they've got that figured out today and if you ordered anything that will ship today for uh for that so um I had something up a second ago bill Connolly was looking ahead at next football season a little bit and um and something for espn.com we didn't talk about this Davo swinney promoting from within for both those spots again he's done that multiple times kind of staying in the program, turning, a, I think, just it said defensive assistant into the defensive coordinator. They promoted the quarterback's coach into the offensive coordinator. But he points out that the two times that he's really resurrected his program were both outside hires, that being Chad Morris when he came in from from uh, Tulsa and then Brett Venables when he came from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, with that, if you're buying or selling Clemson at this point. Selling. You're selling? You think you think their run is, is, is somewhat over? Yeah. You think they've become very good instead of elite now? I do, yeah. I'd, I mean, they're not falling off the map, obviously. No, they're going to be very good in the in the ACC, but I don't I don't know that they're on the same. I don't think they're going to be able to continue to recruit at the level that they were recruiting in their peak. I don't think they're competing with Alabama and Georgia in, in recruiting. I don't think they're competing with a lot of the SEC in recruiting. And, the, and this is before the the New Deal kicks in with Texas and OU and all the money, and it's not there. And the truth is, if you're the ACC, you've the alarm bells should be going off right now. How do we how do we compete? How, if you're Clemson, can you sit in the room and have the frank conversation, right? Where 
hey, all the recorders are off. Nobody's recording this. We're just sitting here having a coffee around the table. All the business is done, and somebody goes, hey, I got it. Just a question. How is it that we're going to compete at a national level when we have less TV money coming into our program than Mississippi State? How are we doing this? <laughs> and I think in that moment, people, there's a moment of, if everybody's being honest, there's a moment of silence where everybody kind of looks at each other and goes, well, it's not a bad question. How are we doing it? And where somebody finally goes, this is a problem. It's not a problem today, and it won't be a problem in 12 months. But eventually. But guys, in 120 months, this is a real problem. And it becomes a problem between the 12 months and the 120 months where it's a growing problem. It won't just happen where you wake up one day and go, oh, shoot, a tumor. No, no, you're going to have this growth that you start to notice. You're like, honey, do you see this? Yeah, yeah. All that's coming, and it, it's why if, if I'm the ACC and I'm not picking on Clemson anymore, just that league, it's scary as hell. Alan, thank you for the uh, the super chat. Um, he says, we, we did talk about Sam Carter at the beginning, kind of at length. He says, a lot of noise coming out of uh, U of A that he had issues interacting, motivating today's athletes. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, too. There's... It's kind of two different schools of thought on him, and then so much of it is everyone's going to dissect it based on agenda. I think he's a good coach. Uh, he is. He does have a hard school, um, hard nosed, old school sort of reputation. That um, he's a shock to the system a little bit. That for... I think rubs some kids the wrong way. I, I'm I'm not completely sure that I'm prepared to blame him for Fusha and Brooks leaving Arkansas. Those are two. Louisiana kids who LSU made priorities in the in the tamper, I mean the transfer portal. And um, you know, both of those guys at different times in the season got benched at Arkansas. Then they came back and played a bunch. I think it was I think it was Fusha that had a really good outback bowl. But man, I don't know. I mean, so many kids bolt at the first opportunity, so you can go both ways. I, it, it's, I think it's a good hire for Lane Kiffin. I don't think it's changing the calculus. Tell me if this is fair. Yeah, sure. I don't think Sam Carter leaving Arkansas to go to Ole Miss changes the calculus of either one of those programs or teams. Oh, no, 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 no. I think I don't that, think he makes Ole Miss better or worse, and I don't think he makes Arkansas worse or better. I just – whatever. It doesn't matter. He's known as a better recruiter than Terrell Buckley, so we'll see if that turns into anything right. from a prospect standpoint. I don't know. I don't um, think Chris Partridge was – I think one of his prerequisites was, hey, we – We got to do something I, here. We got to do something secondary. Yeah. So, no, I, I mean, I, that, I, that would be the hope for Ole Miss. And I do think Carter is a is a is is known as a very good technician. Sure. So, maybe he'll learn a lesson here. He's a young guy. Maybe he learns, hey, I've got to tone this down some. Yeah, you mail to your team and everything. So, sure. But back to the ACC for a minute, I think it's a problem. I, I do. I think they have a problem, I, and I think they have to know they have a problem. Right now, the only two leagues that can sit in the room and have their cup of coffee or glass of wine or beer or whatever and go, hey, we're good today, is the uh, SEC and the Big Ten. The Big Ten can sit around and go, yeah, you know, we're not the SEC, but we're fine. We're good. Got lots of money. Making lots of money. We're fine. Yeah. We're good. Might need to think about what we're doing next a little bit. But it's all right. Might need to have that conversation. But, hey, listen, guys, if we got something to do today, we, we can do this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If I'm the ACC, I'm, I mean, I'm that antsy guy in the room that finally goes, hey, can we talk about this? Like, this is a problem. We're acting like there's no problem, and the problem's like right here. And it's coming. And the Pac-12 has the big growth already on it. Oh, they're, they're screwed. It, it, I think they're done. It's terminal. I think they're done. Yeah. The Big 12 sort of knows, okay, well, here's what we're going to be. We're going to be the worst of the Power 5 leagues. We've got to figure out a way to make this kind of doable for a while, but it is what it is. We're, it's survival mode. Can we just stay in the conversation? We're the guy going to the bar. We are not leaving with the prettiest girl. But you know what? If we'll just kind of be funny a little bit and stick it out, Maybe by the end of the night, the, that girl over there in the corner that looks at us right now and goes, uh-uh, maybe she goes, well, maybe. 
Mm-hmm. That's them. And the SEC, if they're smart, and they are, are sitting in the room going, <laughs> all right. How and when do we take the kill shot? We've got the them wounded down. animals are over here. We've got them down. Where do we? Where do we go for the kill? Do we go west? Do we go Midwest? How do we do this? And then the Big Ten goes, okay. If this is kind of funny, I'm entertaining myself here. the The Big Ten goes, all right. What kill shot do we anticipate the SEC taking? And when they do, what's our counter? That's their discussion, which is very valid, and they're fine. There is no scenario where the Big Ten goes, oh. We're probably not taking them on, but okay. Well. Yeah, there's no scenario where the Big Ten goes, oh, my God, they're going to they're gonna kill us. No, no, no. They're fine. Everybody else should be in a state. of The other two leagues, like the Pac-12's done. The, the ACC is the one that maybe could figure this out. But, but they, they aligned with – This I mean, passive-aggressive thing that they do. With, I still don't understand to this day. I mean, the Big Ten said, you know what, I'm going to align with the ACC and the Pac-12. Well, why? Yeah. Uh, why? What was in it for you? No, I mean, when all that was going on, I made one call, and it's to Sankey, and I go, hey, uh, what do you think? Cool? Listen, I don't, I don't how about, know. How about, how about we do an SEC Big Ten challenge? Third Sunday, third Saturday in September. Greg, I don't know if you can see me on this Zoom, but I'm on my knees. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on my knees right now, and and that can be that can mean anything you need it to mean, Greg. But we we need you. And yes, I will I, I, I will I will humbly bow to you, sir. Please don't kill us. Oh, let's let's. Let's and that's Clemson's problem. Clemson's problem at the end of the day is because if the honest hand raised guys, when they go, hey, coffee is not strong enough, someone bring out the brown liquor. Hey, if we're being honest with each other here, if the SEC goes for the ACC kill shot, they're not coming to us. Mm. They're not coming to us. They're going to North Carolina, Virginia, maybe. We're not going to get the lifeline. Mm-mm. Like, what the hell are we doing? Which I think was maybe their answer was why the eight, why Clemson at least goes well. Okay, if we do something with the Big Ten and they're okay. Oh, I mean, if I'm the Clemson, if I'm Clemson, I'm calling the Big Ten on that phone. I don't know that academically they fit. I don't know enough about yeah. Clemson academically, but I'm 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 scared. So to answer your question, yeah, I think they're done. I mean, they might have some remnants of it left, and they might have a moment or two that's fleeting, but are they a superpower? Perennial superpower. No, I don't think so. Frankly, at this moment, I mean, it could increase again. There are three, Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State. Chet says, I suspect analyzing female prospects in bars was a huge part of Neil's life at some point. Not really. Couldn't have been less, actually. Couldn't have been less. I, I was the guy, Chet, if I'm being completely honest, walked into the bar and knew I was leaving alone. And never really, never crossed my mind. Now, I did learn a lot bartending. You were scared of no. I learned a lot bartending watching the game play out. Okay. I was very, very, very good at predicting outcomes as a bartender. You saw it start. Oh, I hit more than 900. Absolutely. Yeah, that guy's in good shape or nah. I was incredibly good at it. To the point where it was a game that we played the fellow bartenders. and, And they would come to me as... What do you think? What do you think? And whatever I said is what – because we would bet on it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to have you have to entertain yourself over the course of an evening. Fair. But no, and I was I was never I was never that guy. I I never. I didn't take the shot. <laughs> you you'll never meet a guy who had less self confidence in his twenties than me. It's not. I don't know that it's possible. We hope today is the day, um, just because I'm tired of talking about it. So we'll see what happens. Stuff at RebelGrub.com. More as the day goes on as uh, as well. Again, the one off day between basketball games, Arkansas tomorrow night, back here in Oxford at the uh, at the Pavilion. So uh, stay locked in. Be something happened today, I assure you, even if it's just a bunch of rumors. So uh, plenty to entertain you. 
Hope all of you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.